chicken update. It's been a while. Part of me was thinking, well, I would like to wait till we get everything dialed in and super nice in the chicken yard before we do the update, but when does that actually ever happen in real life? So I uh, just figured I'd film where we are, give an update on where things are moving, where they've come from, and then give a fair amount of actual chicken TV for those of you that enjoy that. So stick around. The update on this high tunnel that we used for the winter, I would say overall this has been incredibly beneficial to our hens to have this during the snow and the rain, especially during such a good cold test winter. Right now the two doors, the north and south doors are off and sooner than later, and I'm sure the next time we make a video you'll see this change, we'll be taking the poly off folding it up for next year's use and starting to think about this space as a trellis for vining crops. So I'm excited to look at what that looks like. I can imagine some winter squash climbing up and into the oaks from all the fertility that's here. Uh, right now the chickens are still working with it and in fact on sunny days they've been using the far end since it's so dry as a dust bath space. But there's probably a good 10-15 yards of compost that needs to be moved from here. Sasha's been focusing some energy on some nourishment for our hens. Of course, we're still using the compost pipeline, but lately she's been adding uh, raw milk and sometimes some high quality yogurt just to make sure that our hens are coming into the spring as healthy as possible after a long cold winter. And as the days warm up, we'll be focusing the incoming compost into this back corner, this annex, and basically retiring the high tunnel as an enclosed space for compost. This is a lot more area because we're not trying to accumulate heat and starting with the compost coming in at the far back and tumbling it down. This will come back to more of the standard protocol that we've used in the past. The one adjustment I'm trying to work on is really framing out a thick band of nearly finished compost around the edges with the idea that this will become incredible habitat for worms. I've noticed this, that when there's food scraps sitting up against this fence where there's soil, the chickens can't dig down in there, and so the earthworm population is increasing dramatically in this whole band framing this space. So if I can get this filled, I'll put bird netting over it, and we can seed it out to vining crops so we get some yield from it, and this will become one huge uh, vermicompost bin that any time raw food scraps are leaning up against it the chickens can come into or the worms can grow into it and then as I turn the compost up and onto these piles the chickens will be eating food scraps mixed with worms. It's been a hard challenge figuring out how to integrate worms actively since with 60 plus hens scratching for 16 hours a day uh, you can imagine worm populations don't have a great opportunity to bulk up in this system. This compost pile has gone down a little bit, in part just from decomposition and in part because we've been using it. But probably right now the biggest limiting factor or challenge for us in the early spring is to figure out where to send all this compost because it just keeps coming. I keep talking about that, but it's an interesting conundrum. I think on a small site uh, where we know we have to transport in these bins up to the main nursery, that slows us down in being able to move this material. So here's this really warm, very rich compost pile, lots of worms in there, and it just keeps piling up. I need to clear this high tunnel out sooner than later so that it's an open space. And um, so we're trying to find homes for this. Again, if you're in this area, if you're in the Finger Lakes area and you're doing food justice work or working with nonprofits, you know, uh, churches and local community groups, and you want compost and nutrient to build garden beds, give us a holler and maybe we can help you out. Certainly plan to do a more in-depth review of all this in the future, but the wall of crops that are growing in the chicken yard, so there's a mix of hazel, honeyberry, and a variety of currants, they're all waking up and poised to put on huge crops this year, and it's been very lovely to see how compatible it is to grow perennial shrubs and trees in a very active chicken composting operation with simply rings around them, 
and lots of logs. And you can see some of these logs are actually fruiting. These are old retired shiitake mushrooms uh, logs and they're fruiting mushrooms here in the chicken yard. The chickens don't eat the mushrooms, but the worms eat the mushrooms and the chicken eats the worms. <laughs> Sounds like a kid's poem. I think that's a long enough update for now. I'm gonna shush up, turn some compost, and let you enjoy some chicken TV. So if that's what you're here for, enjoy. Smells like steamed sprouts. Yeah. <laughs> 